Hi guys. It is a, uh, I don't know, I guess the mean rain has blown through here. On the last day of spring in the Catskill Mountains here on this still somewhat gloomy and deserted <coughs> Thursday night, June 20th, 2019, as we await the first day of summer in the Catskill Mountains. Uh, so I'm sitting here finally getting around to the uh, mainstream media news here at uh, 10 o'clock at night and I was thinking of looking at this latest UFO news about how you know it's the fourth biggest story on the planet according to Yahoo News about more and more senators getting briefed on uh, these UFO sightings and uh, so on that one we see 6,419 people commenting on a uh, on a UFO story and I just about went down, I was just about to go down that road when your old uh, eco Nazi scrolled down to this article from Mashable, and I decided to scratch the uh, the UFO story with its 6,400 comments to look at a story that has garnered four comments on the planet today, and that would be the no shit Sherlock headline of the day in a lost city buried by jungle there you go meaning by lost city they mean in a city abandoned by humans now buried by jungle scientists found creatures thriving wow imagine that and this is not a story about Chernobyl, uh, although it will be, or it could be, it already is. This one is not looking at the single biggest Garden of Eden anywhere in Europe, which would be Ground Zero Chernobyl, the human exclusion zone. But they're going down there to Honduras, to the fabled White City that uh, an archaeologist, I'm sure, are going to go down there and plunder and deforest and everything else. So anybody who does not understand the, uh, this really hard to grasp concept about uh, human exclusion zones or abandoned cities the only, not that I have a shred of hope, but probably the last shred of hope that I ever did have was thinking that nature was going to be able to recolonize a world without humans. I will be talking to Alan Weissman next week, uh, the author of A World Without Humans, and I will mention this story to uh, to Alan when I interview him. Okay, take it away, Mashable. <coughs> there were once rumors of a mythological Ciudad Blanca, or White City, laying hidden in the Central American jungle overgrown with moss and trees. Then, <coughs> to international intrigue, an aerial expedition found the settlement of legend in 2012 and later its ancient bowls, stone sculptures, and mostly buried ruins. Though abandoned by people perhaps 1,000 years ago, biologists sought to find what now inhabited the ruined city also known as the Lost City of the Monkey God. I love it, speaking of monkey gods. 
Anyway, a recent brazen expedition requiring helicopters and protection by Honduran soldiers discovered the white city teeming with wildlife. Wow! The deserted civilization is apparently much more than an archaeological marvel. This is Tron de Larson, a biologist who led the expedition. Quote, we wondered, the government wondered, and Hondurans wondered if there were other things special about this area. The answer is yes. Hmm. The ancient settlement, the otherwise, the ancient settlement, the abandoned by humans city, is a rare instance of untrammeled wilderness where jaguars, pumas, snakes, bats, frogs, birds, and insects thrive. <clears throat> said Larson, there's not many places left where we see a full community of species from the prey all the way up to the predators. Yes. Uh, overall, the observed creatures now living in the abandoned human settlement include 22 species never seen before in Honduras. Two species thought to have been wiped out in Honduras and a tiger beetle previously thought extinct. This is Daisy Marion, another conservation biologist. <clears throat> Quote, to discover that Ciudad Blanca is teeming with flora and fauna is extremely promising, as large expanses of undisturbed forest are becoming increasingly rare in Central America. Yes, and you can add the white city, the city of the monkey god, to the list of uh, soon-to-be-destroyed uh, little gardens of Eden left in the shithole country of Honduras, uh, partly thanks to this story. The rich biodiversity is positive, she noted, as 83% of wildlife populations in Latin America have declined since the 1970s, mainly due to the destruction of their habitat by humans. Yes, the large mammals like jaguars and tapirs are certainly impressive, but the diversity of environmentally sensitive amphibians and reptiles are particularly exciting, said Marion, who took no part in the expedition. <clears throat> Quote, their presence and diversity indicate good health of the forest and ecosystem. Yes, it is amazing what can happen when you get rid of the humans. The lost city flourishes with life. It is still secluded from modern human development. No roads travel anywhere close to it. And it is surrounded not just by mountain ridges, but brush so thick explorers have to whack through the walls of vegetation. But few lands on Earth are so fortunate. Noted Larson, habitat loss is a struggle everywhere. It is the main driver of species extinction, and climate change is exacerbating the problem." Close quote. On a planet now dominate, dominated by humans, the solution, if somewhat obvious but difficult to supply, 
is to eradicate humans off the planet to provide animals big swaths of land to thrive in. Obviously, I was joking there, guys. Uh, I love this. On a planet dominated by humans, the solution is to provide animals big swaths or corridors of land to thrive in. Yes, there, there is the solution. There you go. Uh, for a, a planet dominated by humans, no one is going to suggest, no conservation biologist uh, talking about how human exclusion zones turn in to gardens of Eden, not one of these conservation biologists is going to say at least publicly, you know, they're from, they're mostly from this environmental organization, Conservation International, one of these big mainstream environmental organizations. You better goddamn believe, guys, that no biologist from Conservation International talking about how human exclusion zones turn in to Gardens of Eden is ever going to come up with the ridiculous notion that on a planet now dominated by humans, the somewhat obvious but difficult to apply solution is to get rid of the fucking humans. I'm getting looked at by people walking down the sidewalk. This is a man buying a case of 24 plastic bottles of water. Okay. As Robin Verbal, an associate professor of biological scientists at Missouri University of Science and Technology said, quote, one 10 acre preserve is better than 10 one-acre preserves. Yes, added Marjan, pockets of forest can contain good numbers of diversity. However, these pockets need to be connected by a network of wildlife corridors, so terrestrial animals in particular can migrate and roam and ensure good passage of genetic diversity throughout the region." Close quote. This reminds me of this story uh, from Costa Rica that I've mentioned uh, sort of on, on this line. You know, when they, so they, you know, when they built this uh, big planet-eating highway through this uh, forest, in uh, southwestern Costa Rica, where I used to spend my winters, where these goddamn planet eaters went down there and rammed this fucking highway uh, through this beautiful rainforest uh, along the southwest Costa Rica coast. Take a while, guess what started happening? All the animals started getting run over by all the clueless fucking morons. You know, so these little, uh, uh, the, 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 these little beautiful people could go down there and open their fucking yoga studios and their organic quinoa, quinoa uh, restaurants. You know, all of the little eco-tourists flooding to the yoga studio, running over all of the animals on the new highway uh, that was rammed through Costa Rica. So, so what all these little do-gooders uh, did down there is they made these, you, you've heard about these, you, you know, sometimes they're bridges and sometimes they go under the road. So they channel the, the wildlife into these corridors. Now this is, is, is where they cross the road where they don't get run over which has had some pretty good luck with like prong or horn antelope here in the U.S. So what happened is they channeled all of the animals, you know, every few miles they would do one of these, they were mostly underpasses under the highway. So all the animals went through these little culverts or whatever. So take a wild guess what the fucking Costa Ricans did. 
they just sat there with their guns and traps in the wildlife corridors, waiting for the animals, you know, to get funneled in so they could be shot and trapped. And this is exactly uh, what, uh, what these little limp dick environmentalists never talk about with these wildlife corridors. And don't get me wrong, I am a big fan of wildlife corridors, okay? I am a big fan. Hambone Little Tail is the biggest fan of wildlife corridors uh, on the planet, but Hambone Little Tail has also pulled his head out of his fucking ass and understands that if you make a wildlife corridor where a hot, where an unnaturally large number of animals are going to be passing through this bottleneck, uh, going from one bottle to the next, who the fuck do you think is going to be lining the corridors? It's going to be all of these goddamn planet nibblers out there, you know, shooting and trapping the animals, throwing them in the fucking stew pot, selling all of their goddamn skins and bladders and claws and fangs to the goddamn uh, Chinese clueless fucking morons. There's nobody cheering on animal corridors anymore uh, than someone looking, you know, for a, for a fucking taper to put in the stew pot. You know, we need to get rid of the fucking humans is the somewhat obvious solution to a, to a, uh, a planet dominated by humans. It's not to line up the animals to give the fucking humans uh, easier targets to shoot. Anyway, where were we? Back to Mashable, now that I've read between the lines for you. This means smart land use planning, explained Larson. It means accepting it means accepting that grass-munching cows are not going away. Well, if humans go away, so will their grass-munching cows. So, choosing land for cattle that does not cut into a wildlife corridor. Oh yeah, that's going to happen. It means funding efforts to buy and protect vast swaths of land. I don't need to go on a rant about uh, protected areas in Honduras. And it means supporting policies and politicians that support meaningful land protection. Yes, like the recent establishment of over 2 million acres of forest in Peru's Yaguas National Park. There is a perfect example of what I was just talking about, where the, these politicians, uh, you know, go, they, they, they go on a map and, and they draw a line uh, around a big piece of green. Uh, and so these clueless fucking uh, little eco-tourists think uh, that the land is being protected. Now, obviously, a, there's a, a, a national park in Peru is going to get a little more protection than not in a national park. Yes, meaningful land protection. Yes, like Peru's Yaguas National Park. Oh, yeah. There's some meaningful land protection for you. Finding thriving life in a long lost city was not an easy endeavor, but so it goes in the true wilderness where chaos reigns and humans are the outsiders. Yes, said Larson to me, if I am covered in mud and insect bites and infected with a parasite, I find that invigorating. It is part of the immersive experience of being in nature in its raw form. Yes, 
and we have four comments. Let's see. Uh, okay. Take it away. Speak. A nasty flu strain would resolve most of this problem. Just cut to the root cause. The human population number is simply too high. Four thumbs up, now five thumbs up. Here is Jeff. Lost city? Buried by jungle? No humans! Gee, think hard on that one. Mm-hmm, thank you, Jeff. Uh, okay, let's hear from Nick. Awesome! Now, let's hope humans don't come in and kill all the wildlife and destroy the structures all in the name of scientific research. And comment number four from Patty. They should have kept it a secret. Now, humans will go there and destroy it all. That's what humans do everywhere. And uh, I wish to hell, Patty, if you're listening to this rant, I am in love with you, girl. Uh, you can find me on Humpty Dumpty Tribe. We have a Doomer chick uh, settling in. Uh, four comments. But all good ones. Anyway, I've got to wrap up this no-shit Sherlock story about let's start by killing all the humans. Uh, finish this piss-warm beer. I'm out of tequila. I'm drinking a hot beer. Uh, oh, well figure out what to do with the rest of my exciting night. Fight the bears. We had a goddamn bear on the porch last night again. I gotta keep my little dog on a short leash. The bears are restless in the Catskill Mountains. Bye guys.